It's hard to imagine it in the year 2020, but once upon a time, Marvel used to publish something called the Marvel Swimsuit Special, and it was popular. It, it actually sold fairly well, so much so that other companies actually you know, picked it up and, and uh, did it themselves. So what was this? Why did they do it? And, and, uh, <laughs> and, and was, it, was it crazy offensive or you know, was it basically just bikinis? Hey everybody, this is Perch. With all the outrage and the you know the the comments around uh, comics and the content and representation of of how the women appear on the page and everything else, it's weird to think that you know basically less than thirty years ago, about twenty five years ago, uh, there was something called the Marvel Swimsuit Special, and they existed from uh, from there's five issues from 91 to 95. And then weirdly enough, uh, this recently came back on the radar as Marvel was going to publish another one in 2019, last year. But then there was an outrage and people couldn't believe it. And how dare uh, Marvel do this kind of thing? What's funny is that Marvel, I think, could spend 10 years uh, basically you know, eliminating kind of all, all hints of anything uh, remotely sexy in their books. And then they say, you know what, uh, we, we want to have like two, <laughs> two pinup uh, pages uh, where, you know, the, the characters are in swimsuits and immediately you'd get people like, oh, this is Marvel again, always a sexist company. And it's, it's like, you, you, there's no, there's no, uh, you know, getting, it, it just, it's, it's always so ready on people's lips. But anyway, and what's funny about this, I just want to say, um, because this, this stirred up so much annoyance and controversy a year ago, but the characters fly around in skin tight jumpsuits. I'm not, maybe it's just me. I'm just not getting the big leap between a skin tight superhero jumpsuit costume and a one piece bathing suit, which may or may not actually show more skin than what they have on normally from issue to issue. I, I, I just, I'm not, I mean, I get that there's, I, I don't get it. I, I just don't get it. <laughs> but at any rate, um, why did these issues exist? Well, for money. Um, Tom DeFalco was uh, editor-in-chief during most of this run, and the series was uh, was an attempt to get cash. A huge shock. Um, the company was struggling in the 90s, ultimately uh, did file for bankruptcy um, in the mid-90s, and this run was, um, was, was an easy way to make money. Uh, it copied the Sports Illustrated swimsuit issue. Um, it, it basically, uh, what was weird about this is it did have some really nice, uh, art in there. I, I think, uh, there was some, some pretty nice pinup images from, you know, various popular artists at the time. Um, but what was also funny is, is everybody points out how it, uh, it's kind of, uh, objectifies women. However, um, there were various shots in the comic of, of men, like the Punisher had on this weird string, uh, you know, spandex bikini kind of <laughs> briefs with the big Punisher logo right over his junk. And <laughs> I mean, it's yes, the women were drawn in, in bikinis. But again, if you looked at this and, and by the way, you may say this is all part of the part of the larger problem. Most of the costumes were not terribly different from what the characters were flying around in or running around in normally. Uh, yes, they, they did have bikinis and there was a lot of butts uh, in this comic. But generally speaking, um, the, for the women, it was it was kind of business as usual. Which again, you may say that, oh, that's all part of the problem. That's what we're trying to say. Uh, but if anything, it was the men who had a bigger leap in this. Because you got Wolverine and Nick Fury and... Uh, and the Punisher, and and some pretty insane uh, images of the Marvel men, like in 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 very bizarre um, uh, comics uh, costumes. It, it was it, there was some some crazy stuff. It was also the time of like crazy muscles, um, where you'd have like North Star uh, looks like he's uh, I mean he's he's Arnold Schwarzenegger level of uh, of strength uh, going on, but. A lot of mustaches. Anyway, um, it was there. It started out with certainly more women than men, but uh, then by issue four, they made the uh, uh, let's see the the announcement that they reached gender parity, 
in the characters. Which I just, I'm picturing the editor. It's going around like counting up. It's like, oh, we need two more dudes in here. I, I'm just, I don't know. Um, at any rate, you can imagine kind of the uh, the critical reception. Um, you know, Chris Claremont absolutely hated it. Uh, he hated it for the depiction of women. Again, he would write comics where uh, the X Men would sometimes go to the Savage Land and lose their clothes, and they would get kind of ripped off of them. So, I mean, I, I'm just saying. I, I, I don't. I again, I'd love for somebody to sit down and go. Anyway, um, <laughs> but uh, you know, and then people are saying this was. I think that the the common quote was uh, spank material for nerdy teenage boys. Um, and uh, sexualized swimsuits, uh, which, sure. But, for example, I think, again, I think Psylocke had more clothes on in this than uh, whatever. Uh, but, but at any rate, this was, uh, this, this, this series, the swimsuit issues, uh, were often held up as everything that was wrong in the 90s and everything that was wrong with uh, um, kind of sexism and other things. Uh, again, Marvel has, has dipped into it, Um at various times, there was uh, when ESPN does their uh, body issue. Uh, they had some uh, illustrations of some Marvel characters there. Um, they've they've uh, Marvel does have no problem going back to beefcake art of their male superheroes because they they did a series of variant covers that you might have missed in 2016 with uh, with dudes. But anyway, they they and what's funny is the reception to that was they weren't sexy enough. They they that the male. <laughs> I, 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 anyway, I, I try and sort through this stuff and I, I'm not able to even, um, uh, you know, even kind of explain, uh, what, what's going on. Um, uh, but, um, uh, we had, you know, like I said, we had five issues. Um, the setting was always a uh, place in the Marvel universe. You had the Savage Land, Wakanda. Uh, in fact, that led to one of the cover, I think of the second issue said, take a Wakanda wild side. It's like, ah, <laughs> puns. They're fun. Um, but they went to the moon and Madripoor and other places. I mean, it was, it was, um, it was goofy. It was definitely a goofy nineties thing, but it is one of those areas that if you did, if you didn't grow up during this period, your, your reaction to these swimsuit issues probably is based on somebody else's reaction. If you weren't uh, alive to see this or you weren't in shops and didn't, this, you missed this thing, then you're, you're probably reacting to somebody else's reaction. And when you finally get your hands on it, I think you discover kind of two things. Number one, it was kind of stupid. <laughs> the stuff was kind of stupid fun, sometimes not even fun. It was just kind of dumb. And two, it wasn't as as sexist and as, as an insane. It was insane, but maybe not as sexist as as people think. Uh, it it, um, it you know it it the, the the images were kind of a variety of art styles. There was some some a few cool things. Uh, the brothers Hildebrandt did some covers. Uh, Adam Hughes did some some really nice art. I mean, there was some nice art in there, but there's also just a bunch of kind of junk. And um, you know it it. It is what it is. Like I said, they've tried to revive it, I guess, twice. So first, around 2015, Chris Anka, Kevin Wada uh, was going to do this. And um, they, they had planned to, to put it together. Uh, they had done a sketchbook for it, uh, but then uh, Marvel didn't approve it. Uh, again, not wanting to get into you know, being sexist. And then in 2019, uh, they actually announced something. Adam Hughes, Ron Lim was going to do a bunch. Uh, to coincide with kind of the anniversary of a bunch of things. But, um, you know, Marvel was uh, deluged by complaints from worried fans who were concerned that uh, that this would lead to a collapse of mortal fortitude. Or I, I, who knows? At any rate, um, like I said, I, this this whole thing to me is, is kind of a, it's an indication of where, of some hypocrisy. I'm not holding these issues up as amazing. I mean, as you heard earlier, the issues were largely terrible. They're they're a bunch of pinups, uh, some good art, a lot of terrible art. They they were a non-issue. Uh, they did sell, frankly, quite well. I I was in op- I was in business all five years. These things came out and they sold. Uh, they were they were popular sellers. But definitely less and less as time went by, and people kind of figured out they didn't want to see the Punisher in spandex. Uh, but but yeah, they sold. Um, I have no idea what the customers did with them when they took them home. Yeah, maybe, maybe they were spank material for teenage boys. I have no idea, but anyway, they they were financially profitable. Um, but it, they they 
you know, they're, are they kind of the glory time of Marvel? Uh, not really. I mean, this was when Marvel was starting to throw a bunch of stuff at the wall. Um, and most of it wasn't sticking. This was the, you know, to, to 95, this was the run up to them declaring bankruptcy because they were having trouble selling things and, and they had overbought and all and a number of other things, but this, this wasn't the, like the glory time of comics. The part that always just frustrated me about this entire controversy is how many people would, were, were totally against it. It was wrong. It was sexist. It was everything else. I mentioned Chris Claremont earlier. I mean, Again, uh, you know, Claremont would have the characters find themselves, you know, suddenly naked in each other's arms or, or, uh, you know, they they like, oh, their clothes are disappearing. I mean, uh, there was stuff with uh, the Psylocke and uh, Cypher back in the day where it's like, whoops, we're naked. And, uh, you know, Rogue's hanging out in the Savage Land and with without her memory or Psylocke is turned into a, a ninja with. A thong. I mean, you know, th- there's stuff going on. And granted, the artist is drawing all this, but but you're the writer on this, and and so I, I was always. This was one of those areas I was always disappointed in in Claremont because he was so against this, but had no problems with having the same kind of cheesecake elements in his own comic. I mean, I mean just you know, I, I I guess it's like, oh, you crossed a line because now we're just calling this comic what we're subtly trying to put in the pages. I mean, either you like it or you don't. Just like. Have confidence what you're doing or don't. But, uh, you know, the swimsuit issue is one of those things that has some hilariously bad art, uh, hilariously bad costumes. And, you know, it's it's just, it's a, it's a wacky thing. Nothing wrong with that. It, it is what it is. Uh, but what about you? Did you love this comic, hate it, uh, f- find it the most offensive thing in comic history, or, or was it just a, a non-issue for you? Uh, le- let me know in the comments below. Like, subscribe. If you haven't subscribed to this channel, please do. And uh, most importantly, thanks for listening.